we are located on the largest inland lake in Switzerland. We wanted to take macro films of insects on the shores of Lake Neuchâtel, then these great crested grebes cast a spell over us. The great crested grebes are in the middle of their wedding market. This open expanse of water is their dating platform. We remember from the documentary, The Coots. When coots hop in the water, it means everything is okay, it's fine, it's finished. The great crested grebes have their own dialect. When they hop, they say, okay, I'm ready to go. This one doesn't know what he's ready for yet. He looks around to see if he can start a fight. It itches. Great crested grebes are about 50 centimeters long and have an average wingspan of 66 centimeters. They weigh between 800 and 1,100 grams. Males and females differ only slightly. And this one is playing Naughty Bird. The hood is laid flat backwards and the beak is half in the water. That means I'm ready to attack. Who wants to fight with me? A great crested grebe underwater, a very rare shot. They are good hunters. Yes, very good fishermen. They are also very agile underwater because their legs are set far back on their bodies. This makes walking on land difficult, but is ideal for swimming and diving. These two are trying to find out if they fit together. Great crested grebes have a very sophisticated courtship ritual. We will now observe this a little. These two don't go together. These two signal that we are sleeping together. This is also part of the mating ritual. It's also very important. One of the two will sleep and breed, and the other will go hunting and fishing during this time. But he has to come back to the nest. This red-crested pochard doesn't care. An ignoramus! This shaking of the head is also part of the courtship ritual. Both should always look in the same direction. This is probably genetic. If they look in the same direction, they are 50% unrelated, so not brother and sister. Fits. Does not fit. No, doesn't fit. No, that doesn't fit at all. They would both be interested. The hood is set up and also fanned out at the back. But no, that didn't work. The female with the slightly lighter belly is at the back. The front one is the male. This is important. When the female is sleeping or breeding, he has to protect the female. Here we see again how the legs are set at the back. This makes them very agile underwater. This allows them to change direction quickly. The feet do not have web feet as in ducks, but are lobe shaped. Ah, this lady is the queen at this place. A strong wind blew across the lake. It always blew the couples away from each other during courtship. This lady here sat down between the reed stalks and anchored herself firmly. All the gentlemen had to stand properly in front of her for the interview. Damn clever girl. Here comes the first applicant. The lady is interested. Her hood is up. The gentleman is very interested.
But no, that doesn't harmonize so well. The gentleman had to leave. The lady waits patiently for the next applicant. She is not only intelligent, she is also a little conceited. Here comes the next gentleman for casting. The lady takes a close look at the boy. She remains motionless, no interest. Okay, he was too young and too ugly. The queen waits patiently for the next candidate. The gentleman is unsure. He doesn't know how to behave at this casting. Ha 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 ha! He also looked up, but there's nothing there. He didn't understand that. Did she finally find a husband? We don't know. Unfortunately, we didn't have time for any further observation. Here we are, on a different day, in a different place, but in the same reed belt. We had to take advantage of our zoom lens. The nest was about 70 to 80 meters away from us. This pair had built a nest in a very exposed spot in the middle of the open water. We were able to observe the nest building very well. Seaweed is used as filling material. The nest is stabilized with reed stalks. The reed stalks are laid crisscross across the nest. This allows them to interlock and prevent them from slipping away. In between, the female stands on the nest and squeezes the reed stems together. The lady needs to wash herself. Maybe she got bugs. Yes, it seems to be very itchy. Okay, it goes on. No, it still itches. The female looks at the nest. What else does it need? Look at that little man. What's he doing? He's found an enormously long stick. Yes, but it's much too long. Never mind. He's a real man. Real men have long sticks.
<laughs> the stick is still attached and now it pulls it back like a rubber rope. The stick does not want to, but that's annoying. Out of sheer frustration, it puts plant material in the nest. That's so annoying. He had a really long stick and wanted to show it off. Look, the stick is moving again. Wow, he's so clever. He pinched it off. Aha! He wants to get attention from the lady of his heart. He helps build the nest. But look! The long stick is moving again. <laughs> With what zeal, woman? He just can't leave it alone. These are our main players. We chose them for observation because their nest was clearly visible. And our observation post was easy to set up. We are on site just in time to watch the lady explain to her young husband where and how she wants to build her nest. The young man shows little interest. He would rather boost his ego and is looking for someone to argue with. But there is no one he could argue with. He swims after another lady. Our lady calls him to his senses. You agreed to build the nest with me, didn't you? Yes, now I remember. We belong together now. Okay, come now! Our nest is being built here. Well agreed. Should I add this stem? No, first you have to take small sticks. And what should I do with it now? And what should I do with it now? I don't know that either. You took it. All right. I'll throw it away then. Would you like a sheet? No, no. Okay, get rid of it. She would like small sticks. Now the little stupid man comes again with a sheet. No, my boy, put that in the water. Take such sticks.
My God, he doesn't understand. I need small sticks. He no longer understands the world. Now she's putting in the soft material too. Ha ha ha! She's frustrated now and wants to beat someone up. So come here, we'll try again. Let's go! Okay, I agreed. Let's go. We heard this bird again and again, but only spotted it once in the trees. It's a 30 centimeter long cuckoo. It only comes to Switzerland to mate. It lays up to 25 eggs in various foreign songbird nests and has its young incubated and raised by the foreign parents. It is a parasite. The young cuckoos then fly to Africa on their own. The flight route was probably passed on to them genetically. Yes, their flight route is about 7,500 kilometers. Amazing, this endurance. Yes, very remarkable. And now he's flying to Africa? No, he's looking for a wife. So we can watch the great crested greaves again. Aha! She shows him that it's time to mate. He doesn't understand why the nest doesn't continue to be built. What does she want? He makes a leap. He hasn't understood about mating yet. But she waits with much patience. She told me to put these sticks on the nest. And now she's taking a break? She doesn't want any more? The lady shows her young man again exactly. She presents her backside. She presents her backside. And he is still confused. Would you like another stick? You didn't explain it to him properly. They told him you have to court, then you have to build a nest and bring sticks. Boy, what are you waiting for?
Nobody said anything about sex. That's unbelievable. It's an imposition. They didn't tell him about the sex. If he had known beforehand, he would have reconsidered. Maybe she's tired and wants to sleep in the middle of the day. Ooh! Now he spotted another lady and is swimming after her. What a camel. He has no idea about sex and still swims after other women. She brought the little camel back. So, let's go! She can't explain it to him any more clearly. He still doesn't understand. Yes, look, his head feathers stand up. His genes are talking to him. Oh, that's interesting. He understands the whole thing. His hood is fanned out. Yay, he's finally getting it. And bang, he wipes his ass on the back of her neck. But now he's proud. Oh, he's done it. He has understood. This is the couple with the exposed nest and the gentleman with the very long sticks. The lady is ready. Her head lies flat above the water. The hood is on. The gentleman has understood. His head feathers are raised. He looks at everything very carefully. You don't want to do anything wrong. Maybe it looks different from the other side. Better to take a look at that too. Everything seems to be in order. He shows clear reactions with his headgear. Yes, it works. And bang! He wipes his butt on the back of her neck. That must mean something. They both confirm that it was a success. But how do they know that? So, we are back with our original breeding pair. The master is securing the nest with very long sticks. This can be helpful in strong winds. You don't want to lose the nest. The lady has laid eggs and is now turning them very carefully. Just don't prick them, always very gentle.
The male watches with interest. Incubation lasts up to 29 days and the two parents will take turns incubating every three hours. Usually three to four eggs are laid, but occasionally up to seven eggs can be laid. How many do you think are to have? While one partner breeds, the other goes fishing or hunts for insects, our man here has caught two dragonflies mating. Actually, the dragonflies were our actors for the macro films. Unbelievable, he eats our future actors. Sometimes they also eat other insects, for example, beetles, bugs, flies, spiders. And when they can, they also eat frogs or crabs. They prefer small fish up to a maximum length of 25 centimeters. These two wanted to find out who was the stronger. One threatens with his wings up. The whole thing remained threats. Then they parted without injury. Oh look, the first young has hatched and his dad brings him a small fish. Dad looks very carefully to see if the fish is eaten. When we were back at our observation site a week later, the two came swimming towards us. At first, we were able to spot a young one. Here they are only three to four meters away from us. They have deliberately presented their young to us. Due to our long-term observation, we were also observed by them. We were like two old acquaintances to them. They came to us full of pride to show us their young. Of course, we praised them with great joy. That was really cute. Oh look, too young. Oops, one of the passengers has gotten off. <laughs> he wants to get back to dry land and safety. Dad has to paddle against it, otherwise the little one will just push him around in circles. Look, the little passenger with the fashionable striped dress. Isn't that great? Dad with son. From time to time, both children are with one parent and the other goes fishing. The hunt was successful. The little one gets a fish. That makes you tired. The mother asked with her beak to the back, do you need anything else? 
The little one says, no thanks. What's all the shouting about? The little one is hiding in the feathers. Both children are with their mother and are curious to see what is happening up ahead. Better to hide. Both parents are in threatening and fighting pose. There's the problem. The strange male threatens dives, and then comes back to the surface facing away from the two parents. It marks with small circles that this is its territory. By surfacing facing away from the parents, he says, I don't want to fight, but this open area of water belongs to me. The two parents say, don't come near us. We have children. The two have rowed back and recognized the foreign territory. Eventually they retreated into the reeds and we didn't see them again. We wish them all the best for the future. So that was the little story about the Great Crested Grebes. We hope you enjoyed the video so much that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and give us a thumbs up. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much.